Hello everyone, it is I, Mark Major, yes, that Mark Major, and we are at my photography studio, the Action Figuratorium, which is in the back of a video studio. Long story, there's a tour on the, uh, on the channel where I go around and uh, walk through. Check that out later if you want, but today we're going to be talking about some action figure photography, and we're going to hook into it with this metric system called um, Time to Crate, which was created by this gamer website, Old Man Murray, as a kind of a joke. However, however, Time to Crate is an amazing metric that can be used in video game design to determine how original your, uh, your game is, or we can even apply it to action figure photography to see how somebody can do set design and make it look more original. So that's coming up today, guys. Everybody stick around. All right, I am in my um, Poor man's Steve Jobs look today. Thank you for uh, waiting through that intro. Sometimes intros can be a bummer. Also, uh, before we go any further, let's just cleanse the palette by showing some toys. This is what's on the photography bench. Um, we're gonna go back to this at the very end. What a huge colossal waste of money, folks. Okay, back to me. So. There was this website that came out in the late 90s. It was called Old Man Murray. They reviewed video games. They were very sort of flippant. They um, are not like the video game review sites today. These guys were jokesters. And they actually uh, created this, um, this metric in kind of a parody joke uh, article called uh, Time to Crate. And it's actually called the Crate Review System. And this is page two of it. Essentially, here's the idea, All right? Time to crate doesn't mean like, hey guys, it's time to crate. No, what it is is when you start a video game, the stopwatch is running and um, it goes until you encounter a crate in the game. Now, the whole point of this joke is the fact that if you're a video game designer, and you're looking to flesh out your world, say you're, you're Quake or Doom or, or you know, 3D Castle, Wolfenstein, games that came out in the 90s, the first person shooters, the first wave of those 3D ones and fake 3D ones, right? You know, you, you kind of need to fill up the space with something and so everybody always just puts uh, a crate in there and these guys would do a, um, a systematic review where they'd go through a bunch of games and these are the games here and they would say how many seconds until, uh, until they found a crate. Um, Heretic 2, zero seconds. Uh, Heretic 2 starts you off staring right at a large crate. Uh, Doom, Doom starts you off staring right at two, uh, two barrels. Uh, sometimes you can use uh, a barrel in place of a crate. It's like a poor man's crate. I kind of like that. Uh, let's keep going through some of these, and um, I'll tell you why I think this is kind of important. Um, just about every one of these games uh, is within a minute. Uh, the game Blood, which I had never seen or played, uh, 24 seconds before you see your first crate. Uh, crate. Abomination, 5 seconds. Um, you have to click through a bunch of maps to get to the crates. Um, there's a game called Codename Eagle. Three seconds until you see a crate. Go straight from where you start for exactly three seconds. There's a crate. A game called Kingpin. Minus two seconds. You start the game staring at a crate. Um, and they gave it minus two because there was also a barrel in there. Uh, Delta Force, nine seconds until they came across a crate. Uh, System Shock 2, 45 seconds. Uh, crates usage in one of the classes in basic training, they say. Okay, let's go to the last page. Tomb Raider 4. You start the game staring at a crate just the right and forward of uh, Laura Croft's ass. The crate, of course, here is actually, it's kind of a joke. It's a vase. So, a um, bit of a difference there, but I think it's a good joke. Okay, the, one of the very last ones here is the game Boxel. And so the game Boxel is... Um, uh, a game where all you do is you run around through crates. It's like Crate World, 
And uh, there's, of course, a crate on the cover of the box. Okay, that is um, called Time to Crate. And the idea is that if you don't know what to put in your world, just put in a crate. Okay, now let's go to action figure photography, barrels and crates. And probably my favorite photographer out there of uh, Instagram channels is Empire Toy Works. I really love this cat and what he's done. I think he's one of the true innovators. I think he's kind of, in many ways, the top dog. One of the things that he does is he puts in this amazing blend of, uh, of smiles and humor and comedy into his, but he also um, hand makes uh, set pieces that he sells on eBay, right? And the set pieces that he makes and sells are in fact little crates that you can use in your dioramas. And so you would think, right? You would think that with this guy, because he makes crates, uh, to go into photography, you would think that in every single photo you would find a crate, and if not a crate, then maybe a barrel or something kind of like that, right? Some sort of a, a, just a generic sort of um, scenery widget. However, let's look through um, sort of his last uh, 12 or 15 pictures, and let's see how many have crates in them. All right, let's switch over. Okay, this is a great shot. I love this. He's got kind of the... Uh, um, the Spaceballs RV thing going on there. I don't see any crates in this pic. Moving on to this one, it's the uh, Jawas and some sort of a, a gate. There's no crates there. Um, here we are, and this is kind of a, um, a larger scene with many characters. We get to see quite a bit of the, uh, the launch pad. There are, if you look right here where the cursor is, there are some little barrels and crates. And there's some up here, but that's the kind of thing, of course, you'd expect to find here. And so it's um, perfectly okay to put them in. Here's one. This thing is technically carrying a crate. That's a little bit of a difference. Here's something. Here's like a little repair shop. You would expect this thing to be full of crates and barrels. He didn't put any in here. Okay, how about this one with the uh, taking the girl to the bathroom? There are no crates in this one. Um, here we go. His hand is in it. He's holding some sort of uh, mech with his own sort of representative action figure. I don't see any crates or barrels in this. Uh, here's a shot of some toys he bought. Okay, here we go. Here's some little uh, dioramas. He actually makes these set pieces. There are no crates, no barrels in this. None needed. Um, here's a cool kind of moon rover. No crates. Here's a little city scene. No crates, no barrels. Okay, here we go. We're several in before we get some actual, what I would call crates and a barrel. These are made by him. Here's some more up here above these sort of uh, uh, hutches where you would keep pets, etc. that kind of thing. And so I'm going to conclude that one of the reasons why this guy is so fantastic, and there's many reasons. I should just do an episode on Empire Tour Works talking about his style um, what this guy does to get his sort of mood across, that kind of thing. This guy who makes crates for a living. In fact, this is what I think his job is. I think he gets up and he makes crates and he sells them on eBay for people. Um, most of his pictures do not have crates and barrels in them. And so I believe that that is, um, kind of goes back to, uh, sort of what it takes to be really innovative and creative and interesting with your set pieces. Okay, so let's go back to, um, let's go back to my cam over here. And as you can see, I've got some, uh, I've, we've got a bunch of army men and they're on these sort of land speeders. And I have assembled here a whole bunch of barrels for the sole purpose of just filling them in the exact same way that the uh, time to crate works. And so I am myself am going to try and wean off of crates and barrels and only need put them in when absolutely necessary. This has been the Action Figuratorium for Friday. If you guys got something out of this, let me know. If you thought this thing was totally stupid, well, let me know that as well. I always like to hear from you guys. So with that, I'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.